Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Please hit the like and subscribe. Ring the bell to be notified of further episodes. This is part three of my series on the wives of Frederick Douglass. Don't miss um, part one and part two. Frederick Douglass was married two times. His first wife was Anna Marie Douglas and his second wife, Helen Pitts Douglas. And so this video will focus on Helen Pitts Douglas. And Helen Pitts Douglas was the second wife of Frederick Douglas. Uh, she was his secretary. She was also active in the women's suffrage movement as well as an abolitionist. Helen Pitts was born in 1838 and she died in 1905. Her parents were Gideon and Jane Pitts. They were very active in the abolitionist as well as women's suffragist movement. So Helen Pitts is um, somewhat of what one might call American royalty. She was the cousin of both John and John Quincy Adams, who were both presidents of the United States. She's also a descendant of John and Priscilla Alden, who came over on the Mayflower. Helen Pitts was well-educated, which was rare for the time. She attended Mount Holyoke Female Seminary, which is now Mount Holyoke College. After graduation, Helen returned to her parents' home in Honeyoy, New York. After the Civil War, Helen um, moved to Virginia and worked at the Hampton Institute, which is now Hampton University, whose sole purpose was to educate Black men and women. After the Civil War, um, people who sympathize with the Confederacy would terrorize Black people who um, they saw as a threat. Uh, so of course, Black people who were trying to pursue an education were frequently uh, the target of terrorist acts. So Helen Pitts was very protective of her students. And if ever um, anything would occur with her students having any issues with Confederate sympathizers, um, she would fight back and uh, report it to authorities. Unfortunately, during her time at the Hampton Institute, Helen Pitts fell ill and um, had to return back home to Honeyoy again. Now it gets good. In 1882, Helen Pitts moves uh, to her uncle's house in Washington, D.C. And her uncle just so happened to live next door to the Douglas family in their Cedar Hill estate. Frederick Douglas and um, Helen Pitts became acquainted uh, through writing each other letters back and forth. In 1882, after Douglas was <clears throat> assigned as recorder of deeds by President Garfield, he hired Helen Pitts as his clerk. So in addition to being Frederick Douglass's clerk, uh, Pitts also worked for him in a secretarial capacity in that um, she would travel with him on his lecture circuit and um, also she helped him write his autobiography. The timeline of their relationship is as follows. In 1882, uh, she began working for Douglas. And then um, also that same year, Frederick Douglass's first wife, Anna Douglas, uh, passes away from a stroke after his first wife passes away, it's written that Douglas falls into a deep depression and travels to uh, back up to New York for a time. And then in 1884, 
Helen Pitts and Frederick Douglass were married. And um, she was 46, he was 66. So there was a, a 20 year age gap. Douglas and Pitt's marriage uh, did not go without its critics. There were lots of people who were against uh, the marriage of Frederick Douglass and Helen Pitts. For one, his own children were against the marriage. They thought that it was um, disrespectful towards their mother who had passed away only 18 months prior to the wedding date. Helen Pitt's parents were against the marriage because even though they were abolitionists, um, they were against interracial relationships. And during that time, uh, in the 1800s, interracial relationships were, were a no-no. Blacks also were against the, um, the union due to its interracial aspect. They thought um, he was betraying his race. They did have supporters like Ida B. Wells and Elizabeth Cady Stanton who spoke in support of their union. And so a couple of quotes from the Douglases, Frederick Douglass once said, this proves I am impartial. My first wife was the color of my mother and the second wife, the color of my father, unquote. He also said, and I quote, what business has the world with the color of my wife? And then Pitts once said, love came to me and I was not afraid to marry the man I loved because of his color. Helen Pitts and Frederick Douglass were married for 11 years um, up until his sudden passing of a heart attack in 1895. Frederick Douglass initially willed his estate Cedar Hill to Helen Pitts Douglas. Uh, however, the will was deemed to be invalid because at the time of his signing, there were not enough witnesses signatures on the will. The property went to his children. Helen Pitts approached them about making the house memorial to Douglas and uh, appointing a board of trustees uh, to manage the property. However, his children declined um, and instead they wanted to sell the property and uh, divide up the money. So Helen Pitts uh, raised the money to buy the property from the children. Um, so she borrowed the money, she bought the property uh, because she really, really wanted to save Cedar Hill. Um, it held a lot of memories. Frederick Douglass had 21 grandchildren and uh, Helen Pitts felt that it would be a good place for people to come and learn about history, which it is. She spent her remaining years uh, trying to further the legacy of Frederick Douglass's work. She lectured in order to earn money to uh, pay for the maintenance and upkeep of Cedar Hill. Uh, she eventually died in 1903 and there was no memorial service. She was buried next to Frederick Douglass in Rochester. Um, and Cedar Hill was purchased by the National Association of Colored Women and the National Park Service conducts tours uh, to this day. I recently had the opportunity to tour Cedar Hill which is where uh, Frederick Douglass lived with his first and second wives. Um, he lived there the longest with his second wife, he lived there for 11 years with her. She is the reason why we are able to visit Cedar Hill today. My mom loves Frederick Douglass and because we are in the DC metro area, um, growing up, we would go and visit the Cedar Hill Estate. They got excellent tours. I highly recommend. This is the drawing room of the Douglases. 
It appears as though they were a musical family with a piano. There was also a violin in the room. This is the Douglas's kitchen. Some of Frederick, Frederick Douglass's trunks from his travel. One of the guest bedrooms in the Douglass's estate. Another guest bedroom. This is the bedroom of Anna Marie Douglas, which was Frederick Douglass's first wife. This room was closed off after her death. This is the bedroom of Helen Pitts Douglas. It looks like she may have been into sewing. This was Frederick Douglass's bedroom and he was into physical fitness. You see his barbells next to his shoes there on the floor. And here is a little footage of the exterior of the home. Please hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.